Hello, my data science friends. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I am Zivan Chagwal, and you're watching Knowledge Overflow. Today, we'll be talking about another interesting data science course that is coming your way from Ryerson University in Canada. So, in this video, we'll be talking about the program overview, the program curriculum, how to apply requirements, international admission requirements, fees, scholarships, everything. So, stay tuned to the last of this video to know everything about this course. And if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and share this video and the channel to your friends who are looking out for data science courses throughout the world. Now, without any further delay, let's start with the university profile. So this university is situated in Toronto, Canada, and they've got a world rank between 800,000 uh, rank band. So it's a little, a little less, I would say, but yes, given uh, the reputation of the Canadian universities these days among the global worldwide studentship, it is one of the topmost universities you can target for and it is much more easier in comparison to all these universities like McGill or Toronto. So you can basically target this university if you are looking out for some middle ranked universities in Canada and you want to study in Canada, data science most specifically. So the status is public and research output is very high. Student to faculty ratio is almost 40 which I see is very odd. Scholarships are there. There are a lot of scholarships. International students are not as much as you would like to see, but already there are close to 1400 international students. So it's all right. And the total faculty, there is a large faculty size teaching here. Uh, if you talk about the university ranking by subject. So this course is under the computer science and information system MSc course. They have got a world rank in the rank band of 401 to 450. So this is even better. You can have much more exposure into the computer science subjects and with a better rank altogether. So this was about university. Let's just go back to the course. So this course goes by the name of MSc in data science and analytics and is offered by the Yeats graduate school. This is the landing page of this course and uh, this course is offered in three different options that is one year full time or two year part time with a major research project. This MRP is major research project and another one option is a two year full time study with a thesis option. So uh, if you want to go into this course with a thesis, you can study there for two years full time. Otherwise, if you go for a project, uh, it will be one year full time or two year uh, part time course. So the degree would be MS Master of Science and is delivered in both lecture based and hands on lab learning environments where students can develop and apply their skills to complex real world data sets and data science and analytical problems. So this is basically the overview of this particular course. And uh, here are some important links that you can refer to. First of all, let's just go into the admission information. What is required? So you need to have a four year undergraduate degree in engineering, science, business, economics or a related discipline. Minimum grade point required is 3 out of 4.33 that is basically B grade in the last two years of your studies and you need a statement of interest SOP as we say resume of course transcripts are required of your previous study two letters of recommendation are required and an English language proficiency requirement is required. I will be touching upon it a little more in a while. As for your application deadlines, the deadlines are currently open. Not sure until when but deadlines are open for fall 2022 intake so you can go apply for it. And skills, what are the skills developed in this course? You will be developing domain knowledge. You will be developing the knowledge of machine learning, mathematics, operations, research, programming, and statistics. So these are the core areas that are explored, that are covered in this particular course. Now, if we talk about the program options that they have, as I already told you, there were three options. So one year full-time project-based, two-year part-time project-based and a thesis-based option. Uh, so in full-time one-year course, you will be having three terms and you will be studying three subjects in term one, DS8001, DS8002, 8003. We will be decrypting it in a while. Term two, you will be studying another subject and two electives and there is a seminar. And in term three, there is another seminar and finally the major research project. Similar goes with the part-time studies. So what happens is the course has been decimated into six terms rather than three terms. So the courses remains the same but are segregated in six terms rather than in three in the previous case. And if you talk about the full-time thesis option, so in this is also a two-year spread across six terms. So in term one, you will be studying 8001, 8002 and 80XX, that is directed study. We will be exploring it. Term two, you will be studying 8004, two electives and 80XX, directed study, another course. 
and from term 3 till term 6 you will be completing your thesis that's all so uh, only the two terms of study uh, would be there and uh, from term 3 till term 6 you will be writing your thesis so this is about the program options that we have now if we try to explore these cryptic course codes so what is required from this particular course is uh, four required courses are there as i told you 8001 till 8004 and two elective courses are required two seminar courses are required and finally a major research project this is for um, you know the project based course so a001 is design of algorithms and programming for massive data 002 is ma machine learning 003 is management of big data and big data tools and 004 is data mining and prescriptive analysis so these are the four compulsory subjects and there are some electives that you can choose from these this is the list you can have a look uh, social media analytics uh, advanced data visualization nlp special topics in data science interactive learning in decision trees bayesian statistics and machine learning deep learning and graph mining these are the courses and then there are seminar courses like soft skill communication and ethics and research skill and finally a major research project so these are the courses that are there in this particular graduate course that is data science and analytics msc now what are the requirements for this particular course program specific requirements what you have to do is to have a four-year bachelor's degree from an accredited institution as i already told in engineering science business economics or a related discipline and you need to maintain three out of 4.33 that is b or equivalent in the last two years of your study prerequisite courses there are some prerequisite courses that you need to have in your bachelor's degree that should be equivalent to data analytics basic methods or formerly it was known as statistics and art programming so this kind of course you need to have in your bachelor's degree data organization for data analytics or database management system so this is the course should be there and python programming for data science should be there and python programming for data science replaces data structures from the fall 2020 term so instead of python programming if you have studied data structures that would also suffice in this case so these are the courses that you require program specific documents that are required statement of interest as i told you so that should be no more than 500 2000 words it should lie in that range only and uh, you need to demonstrate working knowledge of statistics data structures and algorithms databases and r software packages they are concerned about r not much in python but r please do identify any courses in your transcript that may cover these subject areas and how your previous studies and experience have prepared you for the program and how this program relates to your career objectives and if you are going for a thesis option, it will be a different statement of interest. That is, it should not be more than a thousand words. There is no minimum capacity for that, but an upper cap is thousand words. So there is a little bit of difference in what they expect you to have in the MRP option and the thesis option. Here you have to provide all these things, all these pointers that I stated in the MRP option. Apart from that, you need to provide the names of the professor who you would like to be your thesis supervisors based on the similar research interests. So in this case, what happens is you need to reach out to the professors that you like beforehand. So in order to not to get a random professor for your uh, thesis option. Suppose you say you just fill in a random professor's name and uh, your profile goes to them and uh, somehow they contact that professor and they say, no, I don't, know this. I don't know this guy. I don't know about what the research interests are. So in this kind of cases, it happens that uh, application can be rejected. And uh, even if it is selected, it might be possible that that professor might not be able to supervise your degree but uh, it will be provided randomly to you so in that case it is better to reach out to uh, your potential supervisors early apart from all these points you need to explain one point uh, about your key research interest area that you would like to conduct research on so these are the differences basically in the statement of interest for the project based or the thesis option and then you need the curriculum vitae or the resume and then two letters of recommendation are required for the application that should be solely academic so there is no um, you know arrangement for you to collect the uh, recommendation from your manager in your current organization but these should be the letter of recommendation from the professors now if we talk about the admission requirements program specific requirements we already talked about uh, english language requirements are there so all the applicants would be required to provide the english language except for those who have completed two or more years of full-time post-secondary education at a canadian university or they have completed two or more years of full-time post-secondary education at a university where English was the primary language. 
and either you have completed a graduate degree at a university where english was a primary language so these are the exceptions otherwise if you don't lie into any of those you need to appear for an elp test so there are five tests that they accept toefl ielts cael pt and cambridge assessment test so for this particular program you will need a 93 on toefl or a 7 in ielts academic 70 on kl 63 on PT and 185 on Cambridge assessment test. So these are the scores that you will require and international equivalencies most specifically for India. Uh, I have already uh, typed it in the search bar. So uh, what you have to do is you need to maintain an 8 out of 10 uh, in the last two years. So I remember I told you about 3 out of 4.33 that corresponds to 8 out of 10 in our case and you need to have a bachelor's degree requiring at least four years of study. And here in this case for Indian students, you can have a three year bachelor degree and a master's degree. So if you have three years bachelor degree and a master's degree, you are more than eligible, but I'm not sure about any other country. Earlier I said that uh, only four year uh, of study is required and graduate study is required. But for India, they have this arrangement made that if you have a three years bachelor degree and a master's degree along with that, you are eligible for this particular course. So you can go apply for that. So that was about uh, the program requirements. If we talk about this course's fee, so this course has a total fees of 24,809 Canadian dollars, which if we convert to Indian rupees, it would correspond to 14,67,000 Indian rupees. So that is not much. Uh, that is way too cheaper than most of the universities out there in Canada because I have seen universities, Canadian universities crossing a budget of 40, 50 lakhs. But here it will only cost you around 15 lakhs. Uh, now you have made up your mind to apply so how to apply so this is the how to apply page basically and uh, what you have to do is to just uh, select the graduate program review the admission requirements which you have already done if you have seen this video so far and uh, there is no application fees stated whatsoever so uh, this application is free you can go apply for that so this is another good option that they have given for you and there is this video on how to apply so this this is a uh, uh, two and a half minute small bite-sized video that you can watch on how you can apply to the Ryerson University in general. All you have to do is to select the course, upload the relevant documents that they ask for that I have already told you and uh, then finally submit the application and track the status of your application. And one good thing about this course is it gives you the admission status on a rolling basis. So once you have applied, you will get to know about the status of your application within a month or so because they don't wait for all the applications to come in and then give you the result. But if they find a very good application coming in, they straight away send the notification that you have been selected so it happens on a rolling basis uh, what are the next steps uh, you have to check the admission requirement application dates applying calculating your gpa all you have done so far how to make a deposit payment that is something i will not cover in this video international applicants you have already seen what is the difference for the international applicants in terms of indian equivalencies and required documents you have already gone through and finally you have to upload the documents that is basically what you have to do in the application form and uh, still you feel if there is a burden on you uh, with such a fees you can go and look out for the scholarships that they are offering so there are a lot of scholarships and this is a calendar that they have given uh, you can check it out as well but rather i would suggest to go and check through these so if we talk about the program specific scholarships and awards so here you will find a scholarship named RIWS Ryerson International Student Scholarship which is valued at 7000 so there is no uh, separate application for this you are considered automatically as soon as your application drops in into the Ryerson office and uh, if they feel that you are deserving you will be awarded a direct scholarship of 7000 Canadian dollars and there is no deadline of course because it goes with the application and apart from this you can uh, look out for Canada wide and international awards so there are some awards that you can look out for here I'll not go into the details of it because the video will get long I will just pass this uh, link into the video description and you can have a look on it but apart from that you can have a look at one of the most popular scholarships that is Fulbright Canada scholarship you will get 15,000 Canadian dollars and apart from that there is Trudeau Foundation scholarship that also offers you $60,000 
and study in Canada scholarships. These are for not for Indian students, but most of the countries of Africa are covered in this and in Asia, Bangladesh and Nepal are covered in this. So you will get a waiver of 60,000 or one like 20,000 Canadian dollars. That is a huge amount. So if you are a student from Bangladesh or Nepal or Bhutan, or any other African country, you can look out for the scholarship as well. Otherwise, there is Tudo Foundation Scholarship, Fulbright Canada Scholarship, and other scholarships that you can explore. And finally, there is this international support page. So I will pass this link as well into the video description. So this contains all the things that an international student would require at Ryerson, like meet with an advisor, status letter, new arrivals, immigration, financial assistance, health and wellness, working in Canada. All these things are available on this page. So you can have a detailed exploration of this page. So that was all about uh, this particular course. I hope you like this course. You will go apply for it. There is no application fees altogether. So you can go apply directly anyway. Even if you feel you are low on confidence with, a, with your profile, you can go apply for it and uh, do let me know if you apply and get selected i'll be happy to know also i'll keep coming up with other data science videos i already have some data science videos on my channel you can go check my channel out subscribe to the channel if you like the videos and do share it with your friends who are looking out for data science courses around the world until next video au revoir